Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It is a real pleasure to be doing this series and thank you to everyone who has been so supportive and has come across from my Instagram and uh, reached out to me. It's been so good. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying this series so far and um, I don't really know where this one's going to go <laughs> down the rabbit hole. I've got my hot cup of tea. I have some chai tea, which is really good. And here in Australia, we've got this company called T2 and uh, they do some really good tea. So I've got my witchy vibe going. I've got some incense permeating through the space and I'm kind of just, just feeling what I, the fuck I feel, you know, <laughs> just being a witch and just being, you know, me, being me, giving myself permission to be who the fuck I am. And um, let's get on with Scorpio. I know some people have been hanging out for this one. I don't really know where I'm going to go with it. I have absolutely no notes and I don't need notes because I know Scorpio because I myself am part Scorpion. I'm right on the cusp of Scorpio and Sag. So I have the Scorpio energy and I have that outer world perspective, like the eagle looking down at myself with the Sagittarius, who's very concerned with seeking truth. I am very, very concerned with seeking truth. And if you know me, um, I just say it like I see it. And um, with, I try, I'm learning now to be more compassionate and to be more gentle as a younger scorpion, I didn't understand, like most scorpions, I just don't understand the power that's given it, given to me. And it's taken me a long time and I'm still learning. You know, I have this, might have like a cool, just kind of demeanor about me. And I might be very, um, you know, on the outside, very kind of stern, but on the inside, Oh my God, I have a fucking storms inside of me. Storms, raging storms, clouds, lightning, the wind comes and then it goes away and then the sun comes out. And, <laughs> and if you know me, um, if you know me, you know, not like through like the internet or if, you know, if you know me as a person, then you know, like when I'm down, I'm in the depths of hell, I'm with Hades. When I'm up, I'm up through the sky, I'm shining. So it's a really interesting um you know, combination that I've been born into astrologically uh, with the Scorpio and the Sag. And, you know, we're coming into Scorpio season. So what better time to do this video? So we're going to look at all of the light side in the dark sided series. I really tried to unpack the perspective of a darker functioning Scorpio. And some of you might even just want to stop this video right now and be like, oh, <laughs> fuck, there's just nothing good about Scorpio. Like you probably, and everyone's come across them. I've come across so many of them. And let's get this off, off my chest and on the table right now. There are so few light-sided Scorpios. There really are. And this isn't like a sexy, dark, cool, enigmatic thing, like a mysterious thing, which Scorpios are. This is like dark as in they have not done the work on themselves and they're operating from a place that is repulsive and vile and manipulative and psychopathic. And then the light is they've taken the pain. They've taken this incredible sexual energy that we have, that they have. When I say we, I say they too, and has now figured out a way to channel that in a constructive way that isn't destructive. So in a constructive way that isn't destructive, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I think when I think of Scorpio, from the outside point of view, um, a lot of people have tried to like study me or tried to understand or decipher the riddle that really is a Scorpion. You know, when I look at you, I want to see you. I want to understand you. I want to get closer to you. And I want to see beyond the physical veils. And I think um, those born under Pluto, we just do, you know, I can just, I'm actually, this is so interesting because in the past few years, I haven't, I don't really pick up tarot cards anymore. 
because I know, sorry, I know I'm chatting a little bit. I can't help. <laughs> I'm just going to chat and see where this goes, but I don't really pick up tarot cards so much anymore because I don't need to. I can look what I'm getting really good at and something I'm really, really interested in, which is kind of like the new wave and eventually it'll come out, you know, everyone will get into it, um, would be face reading. And it tends to always be the way like I'll get into something and then years later other people get into it and they're like, oh, wow, this is wonderful. And I'm like, yeah, I know I did it like four years ago. <laughs> if you're one of those people, Libra gets that as well. Like if you give me a, a book at school, I'll, I'll read through the whole thing in 10 minutes and then I'll just sit there bored for the rest of the class. Like that's pretty much been my life. But anyway, I'm calling it now face reading is a thing and just being able to look at someone's face, look into their eyes and just know intuitively what is going on with this being in front of me. What is happening with this person? You know, what is this? What are the emotions here? And what's this person's character? That is something that I'm now becoming more in tune with. And as I, I said to my mum the other day, um, we aren't on the greatest terms, like which she doesn't really understand me and um, my family doesn't really get me at all. So it's been a really kind of hard upbringing because I've, I felt so disconnected from my family and trying to come to terms with that. And I, but I did say the other day to my mum, when am I wrong? And she went quiet and she looked at me and she didn't answer. And I wanted her to say, you are wrong. And I am wrong. I know I'm wrong every now and then. But when it comes down to it, it's boring as fuck to usually be right. I'm usually right. And I'm talking about the big things. Like it was, I called COVID years before it happened. I've called so many things before they happen. Um, growing up extra sensory and being a scorpion is not easy. Everyone's trying to capitalize on that, you know, from school teachers to swimming coaches or friends, I'll say something and then it comes true or they it resonates with them. And how did you know that? How did you feel that? Well, I guess my response to that would be some beings are just closer to source. That's how I see it. The closer you are to source, the closer you are to each other. So if I'm closer to source, I'm closer to you. And therefore, it's easier for me to see what is beyond the veil. And that is so Scorpio, just like right there. Stop the video. Stop this podcast. <laughs> that is a Scorpio energy right there because I'm not afraid to go there. I'm not afraid to... Scorpios aren't afraid to look at the deeper, darker emotions of life. They don't believe in suppressing them. I don't believe in that shit. To suppress one emotion is to just suppress all of them. Fuck that. If you're sad, you're sad. When someone, I, one thing I will say, I get really mad when people say shit like, don't be, don't be sad, be happy. Oh, smile. You know, it's kind of like a cover thing where it's like, you're not allowed to feel what you're feeling because if you feel sad, then that makes me feel sad and I don't want to deal with that. So I just want you to be happy and smile. <laughs> like shit like that. It is disgusting, ridiculous nonsense to me, to anyone. It's just, it's pathetic. It's sloganizing it. Um, it's not addressing it. It's just telling, you can't tell a cat not to be a cat. You can't tell a cat not to be a dog or to be a dog. You can't tell, like, you have to be what you are and let others be what they are. And if they're going through something, then they're going through it. Try and understand them. Stop trying to, like, this concept of love. Stop going for that and start going for trying to understand someone. When we can understand someone, we know what they need. And this is very Scorpio. This is one of the first major points that I'll bring up with the light side of a scorpion. When I integrate with you, when Scorpio integrates with you, it intermingles with you, it takes you in as a part of itself. That's why we get mad when you betray us because it's like it hurts us so much because we take you in so deeply into us. Is that a perfect analogy is if you had a jellyfish in a fish tank and you really, really love the jellyfish. Like I say, a little girl really loves a jellyfish and she wants to, you know, play with it, touch it. She loves a jellyfish and it's pretty and they are pretty. And she wants to take it out of the water and she wants to touch it and give it a hug. Okay, if she understood what that being needed, 
she would understand that taking it out of the water would kill it. Okay? So when we understand what someone is, we understand what they need, and then we can give them what they need. Not your idolized version of the concept of love. You've got to give the being love in the direct way that the being itself needs that love given to it. So I hope that made sense. And that's one thing that Scorpios really are very good at. Because once I understand you, that's a big part of all this stuff, like all this astrology stuff. Why am I so into it? Because it's, it's fundamentally psychology. It's understanding the human condition and all of the fragments and all of the beautiful splinters of source, like a rainbow that are all of the collective. And we're all just reflecting that back at each other in different parts. And, you know, we have different traits from different signs and they all have their strengths and their weaknesses. And I really am shocked that this far in society, 2021, we still don't recognize that enough. Like for me, if I was in a job interview and I was hiring employees in my business, the first thing that I would be looking for is when the fuck were they born? And are they telling me the truth about their date of birth? Because once I'm able to look at someone's sign and understand and unpack that and look where their moon is, look where their Venus is, look where their Mercury is, their communication is, then I'm going to understand how I can best integrate or connect with that being. Because we all are so similar, but we're all so different. It's not just one shoe fits all. Okay. So let's get on with the video. This will be reflective, I'm feeling so far from my own point of view. Oh, by the way, everything that I say is just from my own brain. Like it's, <laughs> it's not even like, there's so much more that I know, but I don't say. And that's because kind of like I'm a scorpion. Like <laughs> I've got secrets that I'll never, never, ever divulge. Uh, they go to the grave with me, you know, but that's how I am. So I think when it comes to Scorpio, everyone's trying to understand them and everyone's trying to like decrypt them. And they're straight away inside of a Scorpio is a very primal force of energy that is of life and death. And our artwork and our expression shows that. We are constantly rebirthing. There is a theme of rebirth happening in a Scorpio's life. We die to something, we break down, we push ourselves to this extreme level where we burn out and we're exhausted and then we die, and then we break down, and then something magical happens. We get up, we rebuild, we reform, we reshape, stronger, more powerful than the version that we were before, and that is the phoenix. And we understand in order to have rebirth, in order to be the beautiful phoenix, we have to be willing to die to something first to have rebirth. You can't have rebirth without death first. And that's something that other signs are just not even capable of even comprehending. In fact, a lot of the stuff that I even talk about, um, and I'm not saying that I dumb down what I say in my videos or what I say to people, but I know I can meet someone and dip my toe in the water. That's what we call it, dipping our toe in the water and being very quick. I can very quickly understand whether this person can A, keep up with me because I do talk quite fast and there's a lot of information coming through from my mouth, from my brain into your consciousness or B, they can't understand me because they just don't have the mental capacity in their brain to actually understand what I'm actually saying. So I've tried, like I am trying now, I've got to slow it down and talk slow because generally I feel like quite frankly, a lot of the stuff that I talk about as a scorpion goes right over the top of everyone's heads. And that makes me really fucking sad because I'm doing this because I want connection. I want you to ask me a question about what I said because it makes me seen. It makes me feel seen. Adulation for me, adulation for a Scorpio is not connection. Okay. Telling me that I'm good and, you know, just it's very lazy to give me a compliment. That's lazy. Oh, your work looks good. Yeah, I, that's, that's not going to like, I don't give a fuck about that. I already know that. And I don't, when I make art, when a Scorpio makes something, they make something that feels good and looks good to them. They're not concerned with the outer receiving 
of the projection of what they've done. They're interested in the projection of what you see in them because any artist will tell you and should already know this, but art is just an expression of you. You like whatever you put onto the canvas is an extension of you. Mm -hmm. In fact, everything we do, say, think, feel, our vibe, all comes from an extension of who we are. Yep. So Scorpio is about profound change. We know when it's time to go into ground and rebuild and, you know, start again. And we're not afraid of that. The dark ones will be because the dark scorpions are so fucking paranoid that everyone's going to get them. They're all about protection. They're going to get you first, like a bully. A dark scorpion is a bully. A dark scorpion holds onto things too tightly and crushes them. I am not a dark scorpion, but I have come out of this process of understanding that that is not the way to go. Trapping someone into in a relationship or trapping someone by giving them gifts and keep giving them and giving them stuff, keeping them in a place where they can never leave me, that's not love. Okay, I understand that. And I will say, if you're a Scorpio listening to this, I will say, and I think this phrase really stands strong with Scorpio, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it was meant to be. And if it doesn't, then it never was. Okay? Straight up. Yep. Because a lot of the dark scorpions, and on behalf of myself, I'm so sorry that you've had that experience with them, that they were very jealous. They were very possessive. They just hadn't mastered themselves enough. Okay? Okay? They weren't secure enough in themselves. And I'm sorry that you've had that experience on behalf of Scorpios. <laughs> so yes, I do apologize. Now, Scorpio is the most passionate sign in the Zodiac, straight up. Like Aries is passionate, Scorpio has passion. You'll never see it on the outside. It's a bubbling, smoldering volcan volcano inside of them. On the outside, it's just kind of a bit of smoke. It's just, it's, it's, it's underneath the surface. There are so many layers to a scorpion. It's very hard to get to know a scorpion, really. You've got to take the time. You've got to be patient with this sign. They don't let you in. They don't just hand over the keys straight away. You know, <laughs> no way. It takes a long time to build connection and build trust and they put you through tests. And by the way, I will say this, if you're listening to this video, I have a sip of the tea. Let me just kind of think how I'm going to word this. Um, I give tests. I leave breadcrumbs in my videos and in my messages in the way that I engage with people. I leave breadcrumbs and those breadcrumbs could be things that I've already said in this video. And these are things that I want you to ask me about. These are things that I want, whoa, whoa, I want you to go, whoa, 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 back up. Hang on. What was that? Let's go back there. What did you just say? Oh my God. Like, let's unpack that. I, I, that's what I'm looking for. But when I say things and they just go over someone's head and they don't acknowledge it, it makes me feel that they don't understand it. And that's why I think Scorpios are so misunderstood or I feel misunderstood by others in a lot of ways um, because the breadcrumb just wasn't picked up on. And then it's like, oh, well, I mean, this is basic 101 stuff. If you haven't like figured this out by now, then I don't really see how we're going to really work out in a friendship or a partnership because you don't see me yet you don't and you and and you don't you haven't come to the the term like you haven't come to the point of realizing how the world works and seeing the world and taking the time to understand what is really going on here um so when i see people that won't go there no nope, don't want to talk about it for me it just makes me feel lost it makes me feel sad and this is what we do we push you away and we cut you off we push you away and we cut you off and that's what scorpios do when I've had enough of you, if you can't understand me, if you can't receive me, you are worthless to me. I push you away and I let you go. And that's just how it is. That's just how I work. Yep. I might unpack a little bit of, the, little bit of that later. But yes, the light side is an endless sea of deep emotions, desires. A raging tsunami is inside of a Scorpio. This sign is not afraid of discomfort, okay? This sign 
is afraid of being vulnerable in front of others. Okay, they come across quite clear, tongue tied. <laughs> they come across quite serious. And you never know what the fuck they do in their spare time. They're so mysterious. You don't know, like, what are they? Who are they? Who is this person? There's an intrigue about them when they look at you with that piercing Scorpio stare, when they touch you. If you've ever, if you know a scorpion, male or female, and you've been with them in a relationship, first of all, it's very hard to lose a scorpion because these guys stick around. Okay, I know this right now. I'm single. I would never, ever even consider getting a partner, dating someone, if they weren't everything that I needed. I would never consider dating someone because. The man or the woman or the partner, whatever that you choose, is going to affect your mental health, your peace of mind. It's going to affect the love inside of you, your own happiness. It, they're going to be a part of your tragedies, your successes, your insecurities. They, fuck, they could even be the mother or father of the person that raises your kids, for fuck's sake. So you have to choose wisely. I choose wisely with my friends. I choose wisely with partners. Scorpios don't move into things quickly. We're very trepidous like Cancerians are. We need to come around. We need to understand. We need to unpack. We need to put you through what we call the shit tests. I put you through these tests. And if you don't answer correctly, well, that's not good. Uh, 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 that's not good. That's what we do. We are naturally suspicious. And Scorpions, we're very big on privacy, privacy and boundaries, so if you come across to me and you're messaging me all the time and my phone's blowing up and you keep, where are you? Come message me. I didn't hear back from you. When you message, that is, I'll, I'll block you. You're not entitled to my energy. You are not entitled to my time. You might do something nice for me. That's cool. I'll, I'll return the favor, but you're not entitled to me. You can't tell a scorpion what to do. You can't tell a Sagittarian what to do. They don't like being penned in. They don't like having these invisible contracts placed on them. Sagittarian doesn't, and I'm part Sag too, but we don't enjoy someone enforcing themselves into our boundaries and pushing through into past us and past our levels of where we feel comfortable. You, you only get through when we let you through. Any type of forcing on us, you'll get the Scorpio stinger or you'll just get wiped. Bye, see ya, have a great life. Just like blowing our nose in a hanky, we'll think nothing left. Like that's what scorpions do. We just wipe you. We've had enough of your shit. We've had enough of your bullshit. We just wipe you. We can't be fucked with that. Any bratty entitled behavior. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my God. You'll be so out the door. Like we'll throw you out the door, out the back door head first. <laughs> and then if you have the courage after the first time, you're going to come to the front door. You're going to fucking bow your head and then you're going to pay the respect and then you may get a second chance. But for me, it's kind of one and done. Usually I don't really have a lot of time for second chances. And by the way, the most precious, precious thing in my life that I value isn't money. It's my energy and it's my time because I could choose to invest that time and energy that I'm giving to you or someone else to something of high value to me. Okay. <laughs> So I know this is all very, um, you know, intense, but yes, it is intense because I'm an intense person and I want to be around people that are serious about their life. Yeah. So for us, let's, we can't talk about Scorpio without talk about talking about sex. And I'll get back to what I was trying to, the point I was trying to make before is if you've had partners with Scorpions, you'll never forget them and you'll never forget the sexual exchanges that you would have had with them because they would have been profound and they would have been very psychologically powerful, physically powerful. Scorpions understand that there is this interconnection through the sacral chakra that goes through the mouth into the body and back around again in a circle like a snake eating its own tail and that's the type of sex that Scorpio wants they understand that there is a spiritual exchange of energy when someone completely releases themselves to you or to you release yourself entirely to someone else it is a force of surrender. It is a force of transmutation and creativity because the same sexual energy
energy that when you're having sex with someone, not just a fuck, not just a blow and a go, sex is the same energy when you're making a painting, when you're writing a poem, when you're creating. Creation is a sexual energy. It is the snake energy. It's rebirthing itself. It's growing and it's expanding. That's what, that's why we're, they're trans. It's almost like, and we want to go into a different world with you when we're having sex. We want to take you by the hand and lead you into a, like a really magical place. It's got to be otherworldly where we create this thing where we merge our energies together. The problem that generally happens with a lot of the scorpions is they don't pick the right partner that can actually understand that and can handle that level of intensity because you have to know who you are when you come with a, for a scorpion. You have to step up and already be in a place that is psychologically able to handle that. Yeah. Otherwise, the scorpion will f just use you and get rid of you. You won't be of value to the scorpion. Okay. So yes. And now the scorpion, let's talk about that with the sexual side of it. They are a jealous person. Okay. So what is mine is mine. So if you're thinking you're going to do some kind of, by, by the way, water signs work best with other water signs or earth signs. Water signs don't tend to walk, work well with fire signs or the, the flattery, bubbly, light and fairy, airy. Some of these air signs, they just don't work. It's just it's never going to work. <laughs> it's never, ever going to work. I don't really see it that much really work a lot of the time. It can. I'm not saying it can't. It can, but I don't, I just don't see it that much. You know, um, this sign is not interested in like flirty bullshit, whether you go to a party, say you go with uh, a Scorpio to a barbecue or they take you, you know, they go to a party or you go out to a club and it might be like more of like a, a Gemini might do that to a Scorpio. By the way, a lot of Geminis are very fascinated with scorpions. Like I've had a lot of Geminis always trying to like reach out to me and shit. Um, but they might flirt. The Gemini might want to flirt with someone else in front of me. Or they might want to flirt with someone else in front of the Scorpio. And that will not work. That, that level of behavior is just going to end one of two ways. The Scorpio will become incredibly resentful for doing that to them. Or they're going to hurt you. Or they'll wipe you. Three. Yeah, there you go. There's the three outcomes of that. You, they want someone that's going to be on board with them and have an adventure with them. And Scorpios like travel. They aren't afraid of taking risks, okay? They are not afraid of taking risks and, and making a change, all right? So that's where it goes. The light side of Scorpio isn't really interested in controlling everything. We have just a little bit more chill. And it's really sexy when you meet a Scorpion and they're very, like, they've got a deep voice. There's, a, there's an intensity to them and they're softly spoken. They're the Scorpios. There's a hot tip there. There's the Scorpio that you want. They are hot. They're very much in their masculine or they're very much in their feminine and they know what they are and they know what they want. And they're very passionate about everything that they do, but they're not over the top, like some fire sign, like a Leo is. They, they, un, they just, they not underplay it, but it's like a smoldering interesting fire there. It's not this kind of burnout. Look at me. I need attention all the time. Give me attention. All eyes on me. Scorpio is more comfortable in the shadows. And much like the Cancerian in that way, this is an arachnoid. And um, so it's, its defense system is armor. If you look at the, if you look at the Empress, Empress Scorpio, it's Empress Scorpion, sorry. They have this intensity about them. This is a very beautiful animal, very powerful animal. It's not an aggressive animal. It just wants to be left alone in its nest. Step on it, bang. You're going to know about it like the cobra. You just, that's what I would say in any way. Like don't fuck around with the scorpion. Let them be who they are. Don't push on their space. Don't be pushy. Don't be needy. Don't be clingy. You're going to get a good experience with a scorpion. Strike up a conversation, make it deep and make it count. So yeah, fake adulation doesn't really work with a Scorpio, okay? They can't be fucked with that either. And they are very blunt. So if you ask them, do I look fat in this shirt? They will tell you, look, you look a bit heavy in this shirt. Yeah, you look fat. They're going to tell you the truth, all right? This sign deals in absolutes. 
and we are dealing with Sith Lord energy here. We're not dealing with like Obi-Wan from like Star Wars where they're like, <laughs> you know, like the light side. What are they? What's the other side? You know, the, the Jedi, the Jedis. Not, this is not a Jedi here. Like scorpions are naturally a darker functioning being. So they do have a tendency that to sometimes keep things, you know, inside too much. And then sometimes they explode. So they can be a little bit snippy. Sometimes Scorpios can be. A lot of them have a really um, sarcastic nature. A lot of them are very sarcastic at times, which can sometimes be a little bit hurtful of others. That's kind of more of a darker thing. But most of the time, it's kind of very a neutral energy around them. They have a neutral expression on their face. They could be in pain, but you wouldn't really know. And they're very adaptable to their environment as well. And a good light-sided Scorpio will encourage other people to bring out their strengths and their talents and really kind of share their life experience with other people so other people can get educated from them. Okay, they're very good like that. These are natural teachers and Scorpios are natural healers as well. So it's all about what's hidden on the inside. Let's take a peek on the inside. That is where the Scorpio wants to go. And yes, this sign is very calculative. It is very good at measuring things and understanding the human psyche, channeling energy. And to a light-sided Scorpio, the glass is half full. It is not half empty. And this is a sign that doesn't go into like over hysteria, craziness when it comes up to like difficult circumstances. This is a sign that can handle challenges and identifies problems and deals with things head on. And that is a really, really good thing about a scorpion. Okay. Now this sign on the dark side, like we said, can be very, very vindictive, very nasty. And if you've hurt them, Say, for example, I'll give you a really quick and really hardcore example of a scorpion. If you have, sometimes you can hurt a Scorpio's feelings without even knowing it. Okay. So you probably already have, like if you, if you keep message, like if you annoy them, you won't even know that you're annoying them sometimes. And then suddenly bang, a sting comes out. You have to, you have to really read between the lines with the Scorpio because sometimes you don't, you may not mean to step on them, but you do because they're so fucking sensitive and they feel everything. Like this is a sign that can detect the slightest temperature shift in the room. The slightest like shift of energy from any type of angle, a Scorpio can feel that. They are super hyper beings. Okay. It's, it's kind of hard. Like, and I think I'm, I'm kind of like, I know it's, I'm going to say it. I don't give a fuck. Um, it's not an ego thing, but yeah, I mean, I've kind of grown up that way and because I, I don't know, I don't know anything other than what I am. So I don't know, I don't know how to not be me. But what I have realized very young in life is that a lot of people just didn't um, or just don't have the brain that I do. Like my brain is always exploding with ideas. My brain is exploding with all of this cosmic energy and doorways and it's like, but I've kind of come to terms with the fact that like other people just don't have that. And I think I always thought that people do. And it wasn't until I got older and I started looking at the world and going into the workforce and understanding that a lot of these things that just come naturally to me, other people are just completely ignorant of and just have no clue uh, and it's kind of lonely in a lot of ways. Like I think deep down, a lot of scorpions, we feel lonely because we, we are misunderstood. But like I said, at the start of this video, if you can't understand a scorpion, then you really can't really have a relationship with them of any kind of depth or any type of value. And there's a few, I don't find there's a lot of us either, not a common sign Pisces and Scorpio are not a common sign. They're not a sign that you see. They're not an Aries. There's like tons of Aries or there's tons of Capricorns. I don't see a lot of, I don't see a lot of Scorpios around. Like I don't, I like to come across them, but I also understand that 
because I've had bad experiences with them as well, that sometimes it can, it can get nasty if they're very clingy with me or if they want something from me that I'm not, like say they want to date me and I'm not really vibing with them and they don't really like that. They can get very um, like nasty, snippy, aggressive. Um, and it wasn't my intention to make them feel that way. I was just being honest with how I felt. And I think a lot of people have had that experience with Scorpio or you will have that experience with them because this sign plays for keeps. You know, they want a life partner. They want, they want the hard, real shit, the real heavy shit. Yeah. So I hope that you're enjoying this video. I've got so much more to, to cover and I think we'll just keep on pressing on. <laughs> Um, yeah, please leave me your comments below. If any of this is resonating with you, if you're like, or you could be like, nah, this is all like, I don't know. I don't get it. Nah. But if you are understanding where I'm coming from, let me know, you know, I would love to hear more about other people's thoughts in the comments below about what you think your, you know, what your relationships are with the Scorpio. So I also have come to the point now where I've understood a lot more that, a lot of scorpions don't want to be understood. As much as I just said that we do, a lot of them like the allure and the mystery. And for, a, for, a, for me, a lighter-sided Scorpio, having come out of the dark and done a lot of the self-reflection work, I do, you know, I do have some of the darker traits, like we all do. We're a mix of good and, and, and bad. We're a mix of dark and light, like we all are. I... I have to catch myself when I think that way. I have to, and I have to break that down because I don't. I'm not judgmental, or I'm not hateful or vindictive, and I don't make someone who upset me the focus of my life. You know, I don't. I don't let that get to me the way that it used to. If that makes sense. <laughs> I know this video is all over the shop because there's so much going on in my brain, but yeah, that's how I feel. So. Um, Yeah, a lot of them don't want to be understood. A lot of them feel like once you get to the bottom of them or you figure them out, they go into panic mode because, oh no, what if they figure me out? Oh no, what if they know about who I really am? Like that can be very painful for a scorpion because they feel vulnerable. But truth be told, as me, as myself, as a light Scorpio, I just want to be understood. I want you to unpack me because then I feel that we can get closer and I want to unpack you too if I see you as a potential mate. <clears throat> because we are all on different frequencies. <laughs> like if whoever thinks, if you think in this world that we're all equal, <laughs> oh my God, no, fuck no. We are not all on the same level. Fuck no. We're all on different levels of consciousness, all right? If you actually think that, you're actually putting yourself at risk because the world that we're in is all based on levels. We're humans in, 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 the, in its fundamental form, in the psyche, in the collective zeitgeist of a human. We are tribal and we are hierarchical and we all have little places and pockets in society where we exist. All right. So putting it bluntly as I can, Scorpio, Sag, whatever, poor people hang out with poor people. Rich people hang out with rich people. Think about what I just said. It's lack mentality is taught. Abundance mentality is also taught. Yeah. Oh, this is getting heavy now. Did I just get anyone triggered then? <laughs> Good, because it means you have to do some fucking work. Do I need to expand on that? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing hands going up in my mind right now. Well, if you were born into a rich family, let's get real. Let's get really fucking real here, right? It would be highly unlikely that your parents would let you be poor. Or it's highly unlikely that your parents would, wouldn't give you the skill set to acquire wealth or have some level of comfort in your life. Because they taught you how to manage money. They taught you how to go out into the world. They taught you how to get a high paying income. You know, a lot of us are born into these paradigms. 
And that's get, that gets really tricky because when I was looking at Capricorn, I was talking about how when Capricorn can't get their needs met in the country that they're born in, if they're born in like, you know, a really poor, so low socioeconomical country, the Capricorn doesn't waste their time like trying to change their country. They just leave their country and move on where they can get their needs met and go find and build the life that they want for themselves somewhere else. Yeah, that takes bravery, but it also takes a skill set to be able to do that of intelligence. Unless you're doing some, you know, 90 day fiance television or some shit like that, you know, trying to get a green card. But anyway, I regress. Let's move on. (laughs) We are not all equal. All right. So let's get real. When I'm around someone, I want someone who is at my level. I want someone who can understand me at, at that place It's a very, very specific energy that a scorpion is looking for to merge with. Okay. I want to go further. So you've got to bring something to me to teach me. You have to already demonstrate in your life to a scorpion that you have something of value to them that they can't give themselves. Right. You have to be able to teach me and walk me through and show me and encourage me. And I'll do that for you too. By the way, I do that for you too. That's what Scorpios, they're all about building you up. And um, they're all about helping and fixing and nurturing and healing. But they're also in the same breath. They can also plot to unpack you and destroy you at the same time. They go for your Achilles heel, basically. So it's kind of like I've always gone for partners that are older than me because they tend to have more life experience. A lot of Scorpions you'll find a lot of them have age gaps, whether they go for someone younger or they go for someone older. They go for weird partners as well because Scorpios are weird. They're weirdos <laughs> in a good way, in a good way though. A little bit like Aquarian. They're a little bit alien-like. They're kind of like, what's all this for? And also I think a lot of it in its heart as I've gotten older, a lot of the stuff is all bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of stuff in society that we're all like, people pretend they know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. It's all bullshit. And deep down, a part of them, I think a part of them knows that too. (laughs) So yeah, with the Scorpio, they are leaders. So generally, they like to be the breadwinner. You're cooking the bacon and they're bringing home the bacon. They're a bit traditional like that. Yes, they are. They're attracted to power. Like I said, they want to take it higher. And if you can't manage that, you're not going to be a partner. You've got to be able to be independent to a point where you can take take care of yourself because Scorpios can handle themselves in a knife fight. So you have to be able to bring something to the table. That's I cannot stress that enough with a Scorpion. They're just not looking for a fuck toy. Okay, you, and you you can't be in disillusionment or some kind of state of cognitive dissonance with that either. You have to really know who you are, okay? Because Scorpio will smash its fist straight through you. They'll see straight through your facades. Any type of games or any type of characters, any types of cutesy shit. Okay, if you're in your 30s and you're living at home with mum and you don't have any job and you have no plans, what the hell have you been doing with your life? That's what a, that is what a Scorpio would think. Unless you're a dark-sided sign or unless there's some real, like you've got a family member that needs financial care or you've got to be the care fam, you know, the care in your family, Scorp- that is repulsive behavior. Scorpions don't like laziness, okay? So if you're not doing the work in your own life, the scorpion is not interested in you. You think, a lot of people think they're higher than where they are and Scorpio knows where they really are. And sometimes we might say that or they might say that, but it's true. And you know it's true. And don't take offense to that, okay? I'm being real here. I'm being so raw with you. You're in, you, you want greatness, but are you vibrating greatness? You know, that's one thing I will say if you're dealing with them. You want greatness. You're, you feel like you're entitled to this really amazing partner, but are you an amazing partner? Can you give what you're asking for? Because love is a two-way street. It's not just a one-way street. (laughs) So yeah, I hope that this is all kind of like sinking in. (laughs) Oh my God. Um, I hope I'm resonating with you. So 
we're always pushing ourselves to the point where we break down to break through. Now, revenge comes up a lot around this sign. We are very vengeful. Yes. If you've hurt me, it's a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye. I have gotten better. Back in the early days, in my younger years, I would burn you to the ground. I would plot and scheme and work out a way to undo you and destroy you. These days, I don't. I, I funnel my energy into something proactive and I don't give you my time or energy. I have enemies and I don't think about them. I don't talk about them. I don't look at them. I don't give a fuck what they're up to on Facebook because I'm not concerned with what's going on in their life. I'm always focused on me and what's going on in my life. That's how a Scorpio thinks, all right? A light-sided Scorpio, I've gone beyond the whole revenge thing. I've gone beyond that. It's not, pro it's not productive. It's not proactive. It doesn't make me feel better. I believe that people that operate from a place that isn't really in a higher, higher self place will become undone anyway. They always undo themselves. Trust me. They'll always undo themselves. So it's always about mastering our pain. Scorpions, a light-sided Scorpio, we take the pain and we transmute it. We figure out a way to twist the pain and the suffering and we pour it into something and make something beautiful. We want to build something beautiful. That's what a light-sided Scorpio does. And I was watching TV the other day. It just came to my mind. Uh, it was Batman and it was like, <laughs> it was like the really old shitty one with like, not Val Kilmore. Oh, fuck. Who was it? Uh, George Clooney. And it had um, the chick from Cl Clueless who's like Batgirl. It's such a bad movie. It was just, it was comical, over-the-top nonsense. It had Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy and Arnold Schwarzenegger played Mr. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so, like, it's so uh, comical. Like when Uma Thurman was like talking, she'd be like, come on, Bane, darling, we have a plane to catch. Like, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, oh my God, this is so bad. But then I thought I was thinking about Mr. Freeze, like the character of Mr. Freeze would totally be a Scorpio. That whole revenge is a dish best served cold. And I was like, yes, that's so... Like, if you know the story, like Batman, the animated series from the 90s that won a lot of Emmys did uh, a lot of really great work because it depicted the villains as very complicated and it explained their story. And I think evil doesn't really know that it's evil. It thinks it's doing good. And I think that's kind of like goes without saying with Mr. Freeze's character. If you know that character, his wife got um, killed a Laura or Laura, I think her name was. And he kind of was just trying to bring her back to life and he got hurt in the process. And yeah, he seeked revenge through revenge is a dish best served cold. Like, you know how he talked. I thought that was, a, and it was a really interesting character, actually. So Scorpio, he was seeking redemption. Oh, see, sorry, seeking revenge. And what he thought was doing right was actually doing wrong. Because that's the thing, the cycle, this goes without saying, and it's got to come up in this video with Scorpio, is that <laughs> one village destroys one village and then they, you know, they go band together and get another village and come back and hurt the other village. And now both villages are burned down and now the kids that grew up in those villages go out and seek the villages that destroyed them. And it goes on and on and on and on. It's like Game of Thrones stuff. Yeah, no one wins in the end. Yeah. The only way to break the cycle of vengeance is through love and forgiveness. And that is the hardest thing to do. Hardest thing to do. Comes up a lot with Scorpio though. I have truly mastered it. I swear to God, I have done the work. It's taken a long time. It's still there, but I, I've really gotten to a peaceful place with it. Maybe one day I'll do a video on that. I don't know. Shadow stuff. <laughs> so yes, um, <clears throat> scorpions deal with what is real. Okay, we're only concerned with telling the truth. And I think a really good movie uh, that you may want to watch, a really, really good film by Ridley Scott that came out a few years ago was called The Counselor with Javier Badam and um, Cameron Diaz, uh, Michael Fessenbender. Fessen Fessen I can't, fuck, I can't say it. I, Fassenbender, I've gone, <laughs> I've gone blank. But yeah, his name, you know, my, you know that guy, that dude. Um, 
He's from Alien, Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus. He plays David. Um, the movie The Counselor, that character that uh, Cameron Diaz plays is so fucking Scorpio. And it's so hot. I love that character. Scorpios are attracted to bad girls. I am. I can't help it. I also watched the show um, The Magicians. If you know the show The Magicians, uh, the character Marina. Oh my God. (laughs) If Marina was a person that I knew like in the real world, we would already be married. I I would be with her. I'd have kids with her. We'd be together because... Her character is just so fucking dope and so badass and so cool. Um, Yeah, if you know that character, let me know in the comments below. But Marina would totally be a Scorpio. By the way, two Scorpios can work, but one has to back down a little bit. There's going to be an alpha and a beta there, but I don't know if two can both coexist on equal playing level at one time in a relationship. It would be a very tricky relationship, much like a Taurus and a Taurus. It wouldn't, uh, it could get a bit messy. So now with life, um, a lot of signs like Leo's or Aries, I have a lot of acquaintances. I have, well, they would call them friends. I've got lots of friends. I'll have a party and they'll have like all these people come to their party, but it's not a friendship. Okay, they're just coming for the free food. They're coming because it's all fluffy and it's all helps and suits their careers. Fake, phony people attract fake, phony people. Scorpio, I can look at someone and go, you are phony as fuck. You are fake. Repulsive. Scorpios will be lucky to get through this life with maybe one friend, two friends. Now, the light side of a scorpion in that regard, in the friendship level or the friendship side of things, if you have a light-sided Scorpio, these guys stick around for the long haul. They will be there to the very end. Like I said in my dark-sided video series on Scorpio, even in death, Scorpio will not leave you. They will stay with you. They, they, that Once they've merged with you and they've decided you're the one, you're the one, okay? That's how it is. You get the lot. You get their house. You get their keys to the kingdom. But you have to be worthy of it because they ain't going to give their heart over to just anyone. You know, it's hard to bag a Scorpio. You know, you're going to have to go through a lot of hoops and jumps for that shit. Now, you never know someone until you say no to someone. You never know someone until you say no to someone and you never know someone until you know what they want. That's why I'm very direct. And that's why a lot of people DM me or message me. I don't even respond because I can look at their energy, look at their face, look at their profile and go, no, you are not worthy of my time. You are not coming in. I don't even reply to you. I won't. This is not on my level. It's not on a place. It's not on a level that I would deem enough of worthy of me engaging with it. Okay. You've got to come for it right. And you've got to, you've got to come with depth and integrity, not just nude shots or something like some shit like that. Like it, it's just, it's just like, it just appeals to a very basic level of, of me. It appeals to a very basic level of a Scorpio, by the way, it's all about self-control and discipline. That's what Scorpios are all about. It's all about self-control and discipline. Because pain is what creates something. You know, I'd love to sit on my ass all day and eat pizza and, you know, eat junk food and do fuck all. But I would suffer for that. I would get fat. I would lose my strength. My muscles would get weak. I understand that only through pain and due diligence do I actually evolve and get stronger. And through that resistance, I build strength. So the harder the challenges, the stronger I get. I get stronger and stronger with each passing year of my life. I understand that. So if I meet someone and they don't push themselves very hard, they don't go to the gym or they don't do any exercise and they're always eating junk food, um, well, A, their body will show that straight up. Yep. Sorry, it will. Um, Mirror don't lie. Okay, if you don't like the reflection, don't blame it on the mirror. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know whether that was a Sagittarian in me or that was a Scorpio. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well, I don't give a fuck. Okay, so any type of illusion or delusion to a Scorpion is unworkable and you will be blocked. That is ridiculous, okay? You've got to be willing to tell the truth. You do the work and the work shows. To me, personally, 
the best prediction of future behavior is past behavior. It tells me where you've been directly correlates with where the fuck you are going. Okay, it's not going to be some magical thing where you'll suddenly figure it all out and then you'll know it all and you'll be perfect. No, it's all a work in progress. So the mistakes that you've made are just as important as the victories that you've had as well, if any. Yep. So don't lie to a Scorpio because when you take when they take you in and you lie to them, that's very dangerous. Okay. Also, I will say as well, Telling the truth can be very dangerous as I have so understood in my life. Telling the truth can be very, very dangerous. All right. Um, maybe I will do a video on this. I'm not sure, but maybe I won't. I don't know whether I'm ready to share this, but I will go. I'll skim, I'll, I'll skim over it a little bit for the sake of this video and just, you know, being really open with everyone or open with myself enough to even say this verbally. Fuck. Um, just give me a sec. Hmm. Why I don't do readings anymore. Why I don't do a lot of readings. Well, say for, I'm going to word it in a way that isn't, how do I get, I don't want to say it. I want to say it, but I don't want to say like the details of it. So I have to leave out names and shit. Okay. What I'll say is this, right? Over general summary of this thing, why people ask me, why don't you do readings? Why don't you do readings? Okay. I did readings for about four years full time. All right. I did healings, massaging, energy work, shadow work, readings, mediumship, the whole thing. What I found was most people that came to see me were in some state of illusion and lying to themselves. Yep. So when they came, they didn't really want to hear the truth. They just wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And if I said something that didn't really match the dream that they had or the illusion that they are in, if, they didn't, if I didn't say something in the reading that didn't perpetuate the illusion that they were living in, then they would get mad. They would get angry. And so a lot of it really was about telling the truth in a way that didn't mentally destroy people. And that's one of the things that I've come to understand that I don't want to hurt you, but if you are in lie, if you're in a state of lying to yourself and you've built your whole life on telling a lie and you come to someone like me for a reading or like you, you know, if you're a reader too, you, you have to know what I'm talking about is that I can deconstruct and unpack and unravel you in the reading. So I'll say it. A man came to me, a lot of people come. By the way, when you are actually able to do like mediumship or any type of like real reading stuff, I've got rules in that regard. And I'm getting off topic a little bit and I might have to make this video to, into two parts. But I will say in a reading for a paid reading, you need to be able, for me personally, you need to be able to provide five things that the other person couldn't possibly that five things that you have to tell them about themselves that they couldn't possibly know. And that could be, it can't just be like your favorite color is blue. Okay. That's not enough. It's got to be like you grew up in Geelong and your mother um, was a Pisces and I see a house um, two story and there's a fireplace in the top bedroom. That's a reading. Okay. That's real reading. Yep. That is a psychic reading. So that being said, for me to pay money to go see someone, that's bare minimum, I need that. But what I really need is for them to, un to see what I'm unwilling to see. Because think about it, if people were already in tune with themselves enough, they wouldn't need to come to see you to begin with. Okay, that's why I got the start of this video, I don't consult with tarot cards anymore. I just don't, because I don't need to. I already have access to my own sense of self. So, because I am an extension of source, I don't need tarot cards to do that because I already am an extension. I already am tune, in tune enough with my own vibrational frequency to feel things, know things. I don't need tarot cards, images with little bits of card on it, even though I sell tarot cards. Yeah, but I, I've, I've moved beyond that. And we should all be, if you're a mediumship or you're a beautiful psychic practitioner, 
then and you're doing this for a living, you should at le- you should be aspiring to getting to a level where you don't need cards anymore. You don't need the it's like toddlers with the training wheels. You don't need that anymore. You will move beyond that at some point if you're developing your skill set. Because no card's going to tell you which, you know, which, um, tell me which card in the tarot is going to tell me about your dad and his heart attack, right? You know, directly that your dad had red, red hair and he wore that shirt a lot like that. See what I'm talking about? I don't know if you, I don't know if I'm explaining this right. I might, I'll, I'll break this video into two parts and I'll come back and finish the part two. But for the sake of this, I will say that a man came to me and he was closeted. All right. So he's a closeted, he's a closeted man. All right. And a lot of people are. It is very scary to meet someone that can access information on you without your permission. That is terrifying for a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people stay away from me because I'm, you know, I'm so heavy. I go into these places and sometimes I'm like, fuck, I didn't mean to come up with this, but like, oh, fuck, I can't help it. But that's just how I am sometimes. So he's living a lie. So he's, he's married, he's got a wife and he's got kids, but secretly he's cheating on his wife. He's having all this sex with all of these men. He's exposing her to a lot of STIs. And as a result, he had given her STIs. He's tried to cover his ass, but it's just a lie. He's just playing house. He's just fucking pretending, right? He is a gay man. And now he's got kids, probably shouldn't have had them. And now he's got a wife that he doesn't love, doesn't want, and is wasting her time because he doesn't want her straight up. That is lying to yourself. You're bullshitting yourself. This is very dangerous because the long-term effects of that would be cancer. The long-term effects of that would be extreme health conditions. That's what happens when you don't do the shadow work and own your truth. You've got to be willing to tell the truth because everything that you build off your own sense of illusion ultimately will collapse. It will have the tower card moment in the tarot. It will come undone because it's not built on anything of truth and telling the truth to begin with. It's just a lie. And so I brought up all of this stuff in the reading. All right. I'm going to, yeah. So I brought up all of this in the reading and he got very, very upset. And after about half an hour of deflection, deflection, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. He finally broke down. Yes, it's true. Everything I've said is true. All right. And I gave him a hug and we had a really good chat and a cup of tea. Now, the dismount of that conversation is a very heavy one. All right. That's not an easy thing to do. But I'm also holding space enough for him to know that I'm not coming at this from a place of judgment. I'm only coming at this from a place of willing to tell the truth. Just like if you had a broken leg, you have to be willing to know that the leg is broken before we can actually work on healing that. But he'd come, had gone so far and had been embedded so far into a lie that he couldn't get out of that now. And so I hadn't seen him in a while. It was a few weeks to months after he'd come to see me and I'd heard that he had killed himself. All right. Wow. Okay, fuck. All right, so you've got to be so careful when you tell the truth. If you're a Scorpio and you're out there and you're listening to this, this is the power of what the truth can do to someone that isn't really equipped or ready mentally to even like step into that type of space. That's very, very heavy stuff. All right. And I don't, I didn't want that on my conscious conscience for the rest of my life. I have to live with that. But yeah, if you, you could imagine, and my, and my readings were very intense and they went on for a long time and a lot of stuff comes up with this shadow work, yeah? So that is the power of telling the truth it can also be dangerous to someone who isn't ready to wake up yet. You know, the tr- it can be very, very traumatic for people that aren't willing to wake up yet and they wake up prematurely to like the world and how it works. That's very dangerous stuff here. So that's why I will say that, you know, these things happen. And I had to really reevaluate why I did that for a living, why I was doing that level of work. Was I causing more harm in telling the truth and helping someone? Or was I actually helping them, you know, because they mentally can't handle the truth and now what? You can't go back from that. You cross the line, you can't go back. All right, so I'm going to leave this video here. This is part one of the light side of Scorpio and a reflective chat about my experiences being one and understanding one. 
And let's come back and unpack the rest of this video and the light side in part two, all right?